opinion, is as beloved as that man and has seen all of the hits of the 3,000, my broadcast partner, Jerry Coleman. Thank you, Ted. I must tell you what an honor it is for me to be on this field to celebrate Tony Gwynn and his magnificent achievement and how delightful it is to be here with Tony's family and his mom who was there in Montreal. We'd like to extend a special thanks to Semper Energy who is responsible for these banners that you see surrounding the stadium and one that you will see very shortly. As you know, if you happen to be watching the games while we were in St. Louis, with the magic of that town and the enthusiasm, not only for Mark McGuire, but for Tony Gwynn, how wonderful that was. I must tell you, number 19's historic achievement was not missed by anyone. And now through the magic of television and video, some of Tony's friends and national stars would like to say a few words. Tony Gwynn, 3,000, congratulations. I wish I were there to give you 3,000. Oh, my! Hi, Tony, this is Vin Scully in Los Angeles. I'd like to join all your friends and family in saluting you on 3,000 hits. I've been looking at some great ball players over the last 50 years, and you certainly belong with the very best. If greatness is its own reward, not only have you been rewarded, but we've been rewarded watching you. And one other thing, despite the fact you've punched hole in the Dodgers so much, you belong to the city, because we all know you were born in Los Angeles. I'm sure you have a way of gauging the importance of people. Who does and who does not have Secret Service protection? I have a suggestion. I believe Tony Gwynn should be given Secret Service protection, not because he has enemies. No one has more friends in or out of baseball than Tony Gwynn. Secret Service protection for Tony Gwynn would simply be a way of saying, Tony, you're a national treasure, and all of us thank you for that. Hey, Tony, congratulations on your 3,000th hit. Folks, are excited about it? And Tony travels in high places, as you can see. How wonderful, Tony, delightful. Also, our good friends at Channel 4 Padres would like to give something to tonight's man of the honor. And to make that uh, presentation, let's bring in Mark Grant, our Padre broadcaster. On behalf of Cox Communications and Channel 4 San Diego, with thanks and appreciation, we present the Tony and Alicia Gwynn Foundation for all they've done for the kids in San Diego. Thank you, Jerry, and thank you, everybody, tonight. Tony, we all know what you mean to Channel 4 and the city of San Diego, like your rest of the troops in the dugout coaches and staff. So on behalf of Channel 4, Cox Communications, Bill Geppert, Dan Novak, and the Channel 4 team, $3,000. Thank you very much. And remember, you're only one for three off me. Family here tonight with Tony. Let me introduce first a man I know you know if you follow San Diego State at all. He coached him in college. He now coaches a team that plays in the stadium that bears Tony's name. And Tony literally loves this man and would do anything for him. Aztec baseball coach Jim Dietz. One of the Padres teachers in the farm system who instructs in Peoria, who looks back with pride on that day, July 19, 1982, when as a pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies, he allowed hit number one. And a lot came after that, and he has a lot to be proud of. Here's former Philly and Padre pitcher, Sid Manji.
Also, if you would, welcome from the Baseball Hall of Fame in Cooperstown, New York. Jeff Idelson is the Vice President for Communications and the new President of the Hall of Fame, Dale Petrovsky. <laughs> Gentlemen, five years after he retires, you can have him, but not for a while. How many of you realize how difficult it is to get 3,000 base hits? In the long history of baseball, going back to 1869, only 23 men have achieved that. The first was a man by the name of Cap Anson, who played 27 years for the Chicago Cubs. He was born in 1852, passed away in 1922, and basically his career developed prior to the 19th century. It was in the 19th century. Unfortunately, nobody saw him play. Thank goodness we wouldn't be here if we did. But in <laughs> here to congratulate number 19 and his 3,000 is a San Diego resident who is the great, great nephew of the first man ever to amass 3,000 hits. You can see his banner up there, the first one on the uh, above the left field wall. Please welcome, representing his great, great uncle, Cap Anson, Warren Anson of San Diego. <laughs> I've been here a long time, but uh, this is the first time I've ever been down in this field. Uh, it's a great honor, and I think that uh, to me to get to see Tony and all this is really a, probably a bit of better and bigger experience than what my great 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 uncle did. Tony, congratulations. And once again, Theodore is here. Let me introduce. I just want to tell you what an honor and privilege to have played, coach, and manage, who I think is not just the greatest hitter in our generation, but of all time. I think, I think what Tony has accomplished has demonstrated a tremendous passion for this game, persistence, and just a tremendous work ethic. And the fact that he did it with one club, and we're grateful is here in San Diego, says a lot about what Tony Gwynn's about. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Kevin. We have a video message from a man who never reached the 3,000 hit plateau, but is considered by some to be one of the greatest hitters that ever lived. Years ago, he wore number 19 for the then San Diego Pacific Coast League Padres back in 1936. He went on to become one of the greatest stars of all time with the Boston Red Sox. And here is that video message from Ted Williams. I'm glad to uh, get a chance to talk about Tony Gwynn and to personally over these the television, uh, how happy I was that he succeeded in 3,000 hits. Boy, that's a ton of hits. People in San Diego genuinely like Tony Gwynn. And if you ever meet him, you'll like him too because he is concerned about great things that he can do, even his uh, family, his wife, uh, are genuinely concerned about people, and I think that's a tremendous thing.